Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy and Christy. Hi, everybody. This is my friend Christy, and she's featured on this video, and I'm really excited because she's awesome. We're talking about female Magic. artists. I like actually forgot everything about what I was saying. We're talking about female artists in this video, celebrating female artists, and we're really excited to share this list with you guys. It will be listed in the down below. And these are just like highlights. Like this was like our favorite like card, but Christy included a couple others in there because she was like overzealous and she was like, but this card too. Okay, that's because you asked me to set favorites <laughs> and favorites are not. It was hard nonsense. for me too. It was hard for me too, I agree. They are tied for everything. <sighs> okay, this is this was an unfair assessment. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And it was hard for myself too to pick just one because especially because we're starting with, in my opinion, one of the best magic artists ever, if not the best magic artist. Solid. Teresa Nielsen, because duh. So my favorite and the card that I said I love is Angel of Jubilation, but this was like really tough for me because like I love literally every single Teresa Nielsen art. Ter Therese? 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 I have some exceptions. A lot of her old stuff I am super not here for. So, um, Force of Will. The old Force of Will, not the new one. It's just super aggressive. And it's, it was originally intended as a red card, not a blue one. Really? They just didn't uh, tell her what color it was going to be in. Then uh, they turned it into a blue card, and so it's super aggressive, and there's just a hand coming down, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not here for this. I'm not here for hands unless it's ghosts. Hold up. I want to make sure that I'm thinking of the right force of will. Yeah, it's the one. It's the OG one. See, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, this video is going to be all over the place, so I hope that you're emotionally prepared. That one. Oh, that one. Okay. She does this new one, though, right? Yeah, Dude, she did the new yeah, one. Yeah, I like and the, the new, new one. one. is amazing. It's a great use oh. of space and color and those ley lines that she loves. Yeah. But the old one is just aggressive, and, like, there's a crotch just prominently in your face, and, like, I'm not here for the <laughs> abdominal <laughs> muscles. Like, there's no, there's no part about this that makes me happy. Okay, so I just, I have to, like, I feel like I cannot talk negatively about about things like I feel like I can't talk negatively about her so I'm like I'm just gonna like cut myself off there I just okay. I love everything she does okay but here's for real she actually held my hand once it was like uh, it was like the best moment of my life you met her at Vegas and I'm so jealous okay <laughs> that's because I used my time in Vegas wisely to meet all the artists okay but and also there's that dumb moment. thing that happened with the main event that I don't want to emotionally talk about because Vegas was a hot mess for those who are on GP Vegas so we're just not going to talk about it round that. 3 didn't start until 3pm you know it's it's casual if you're on GP Vegas you know what I'm talking about anyways uh, Teresa Nielsen I love her Um, I my card was Angel Jubilation that I picked Christie's was Descendants Patsy I, I feel like you you started the 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 I, I'm not a huge fan of this art. I feel like that's a really unpopular opinion, but I don't like this. I love this art because it's super ley liney. Not a word. Don't ever use I'm it. I'm so in sorry if Teresa Nielsen is watching this video. I love you. I just I don't like this art. I love this art, and it's because my path with my family is all over the place. And the idea that your 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 path in life has these ley lines that trace back to families and things like that is really cool to me while recognizing all of this makes up who you are. Like all of this is super important and I just love it. And the first time I saw this card was a foil French version of it. Ooh. Okay. Cool. And that was the most gorgeous moment of it. However, this was a really hard one to pick because her natural order is amaze balls. I don't know if I know that. Um, that is oh. amazing. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, natural order. I like this one. Yeah, I like uh, this. Hannah is gorgeous. Yeah, Hannah's um, good too. I like that one. I, I think it's Ivy Dancer. Yeah. Oh, this this was a really oh, hard. Man. This was a really hard one for me. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't have like ten lines on the screen that said all of the arts that I thought were amazing. We could and then the one exception. Order. We could have done like sickly MTG, which I'll listen to down below. Shoot a whole video on Teresa. Teresa. Nielsen art and happily, I would, I would I happily do the video, but we wanted to celebrate more women artists, and it was really hard. My my biggest thing, my challenge with this is like she does a lot of angel art. I love angel art, so it was really hard for me to pick. But angel jubilation, in my opinion, is underrated, which is one reason why I selected it for her. Women. Her Innistrad art was <gasps> fire. Nonsense. It oh. was incredible. I like, I like the description of being hot nonsense. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, Rebecca Gwai. Okay, Rebecca Love Gay. Her. Whatever. I just, I don't know. Sarah's Blessing is one of, if you know me, this is in my top 10 favorite magic art of all time. This yep. art is 
beautiful. And I really hope too, if you're into this video, which I'm assuming you are because you're watching it, you need Hi. to like look at like the art and not just like on the card that I'm showing you. You need to like go and like look at intricately the art. There's like a dead deer in this casually just chilling. But the art, the colors, if you get this card, you need it in the white border. And I'm just saying you like, I don't like white borders. Well, you're wrong. Okay, I'm just here to tell you that you're wrong. And I feel really strongly about this card. And I love her back in Kugway, Gwai, whatever. She's great. So do I. And to be fair, this one took me far more time than I care to admit. Oh yeah, honorable to mention Path to Exile. Cause yeah, so fire. you, you I, I, I love that you mock me for having honorable mentions and then it is actually my I'm honorable not, I'm mention. I'm not mocking you. I just, I didn't know we were picking honorable mentions and I'm mad because I would have done the same thing and I'm not gonna redo this. <laughs> so you broke the rules. There were no rules. If, you, if there were rules, it would have been at the top of the thing. No, However, don't. I'm sorry, okay, I'm so my favorite by Rebecca Guay, Guay, it's very hard to pronounce, but it's amazing. Uh, it's is the Dark Ritual from Mercadian Masks. Uh, and there's a million Dark Ritual arts too, so. There, just saying, there are, million. and this is, the oh, this is the best and only one. I refuse to acknowledge literally any other because there is just this all-seeing eye. It is, it is black <laughs> and blue art with just like a hint of beige, and it is just three, four, three individuals just standing on the world with an all-seeing eye. It's very, it's very ethereal and absolutely phenomenal. I am super mm -hmm. here for this art. This one was hard though because Rebecca Guay, Guay, I don't know, almost more so than Trace Nielsen, is solidly one of my faves. She's she's, top two. she's super ethereal. Yeah. And I think she and Trace Nielsen are tied for my my top spot. Same. Same. And she was super hard because it's all just yeah. mysterious and mysterious and ethereal? witchy. Ethereal? I feel like ethereal is the best word to describe her art. It's just, it's like, not the best word to describe uh, Teresa Nielsen's art I was going to say like, like entrancing, because that's how I feel about Sarah's Blessing, is like that's an entrancing card of like, I just don't want to stop staring at this card. I feel like she just, yeah. I feel like she just sat down with the tarot deck right before she <laughs> drew yes. every single piece of art, and I'm like, oh, this works for you. Ethereal is not the word I used to describe Therese Nelson, though. That's fair. They are similar in some ways, and I can see why they're similar, but they're, they're definitely different. Okay, the next artist, I actually got this card signed, and I'm really pumped, is Carla Ortiz. No. My vote is Tessa, Envoy of Ghosts. She's just, she's an actual she's savage. She is a beast. She's just, like, looking, like, Even though she high. doesn't advise her. I have my, yeah, she's like, I have my staff. I'm just looking like a boss lady, and she is. And I have this card signed and it makes me really happy. I also think she's absolutely stunning. Like yeah. she is prettier than any human advisor has the right to be. That's mm. that's legit not that. fair right there. Yeah. Mm. And the stained glass in the background, like it's, the what she's behind her, like the detail on this card is so pretty. It's gorgeous and foil yeah. and Dragon's Maze oh, is not yes. a it, Dragon's Maze for me was not a super solid set for art. I enjoyed yeah. it. It's not as bad for me as Amonkhet was for art because Amonkhet's art just felt lazy. And you and I have had this conversation a lot. I believe you and I remember. But, but, yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> this was solidly one of my favorite pieces from Dragon's Maze with a few exceptions done by male artists because you always find this in magic. Yeah. Yeah. But your pick, and I'm so happy that you did is Ashiok because <laughs> I love me some Ashiok. Yes, I love Ashiok too. I mean, given my discussion of how Rebecca Gway probably does tarot right before she draws her art, <laughs> it makes sense that Ashiok is Ashiok is my baby because this art, it's just flowing shadow monstrosity, the and background. I'm 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 so here for it. It looks like an apocalyptic nightmare, and just. I love every single piece of this. Plus yes. that, that outfit is I'm, super on point. I'm all about this card. I've played with this card before. This card's solid. I have also played with it. This card's awesome. amazing. I'm really excited. This card's it's, great. Except I have to I have to acknowledge none of my <laughs> cards were picked for the purpose of the actual card. All of them were aesthetically driven. Oh yeah. It's just super great if the card is good. Itself. I feel that way about Eric to Champs. I have so many cards that I run that Eric to Champs just happens to draw. Okay, the <sighs> next artist, I, Jana, 
Yana Shermer, I think. Let's just go with that. Okay, I'm, cool. I'm fairly certain it's Yana Shermer. I, I'm just going to say you're right. I picked Merfolk Me Mesmerist, which, fun fact, when I, back in the day when I had a mill deck, because you know we all had a mill deck when we started out playing Magic. I you know, still have a mill deck. I have, I have an EDH mill oh deck. It is, oh my God. it is the bomb dig ED. I love that. I love that deck. So this much. pair also, um, this is one of my favorite artists too. Male Your artist. artist boss? Um, yeah, that I, I can't pronounce anything. So anyways, it's, they do collabs together. I'm pretty sure. Uh, collabs with other. Yana Sharma, to my knowledge, does not have a card on her own. Yana, oh, I, I believe Yana Sharma has only ever collabed with Johannes Voss. Although Johannes mm. Voss has done stuff on his own. Gotcha. Interesting. If you guys know, if you guys know any details about that, like I'd love to know. But this art is so pretty. It is mesmerizing. I love the background. I love the, she's got like pink hair. Yes, I'm all for that life. And I love her like dress. Yeah, I'm all about this art. I love it. And then yours is Curse of Oblivion. Yeah, so, so I, am, I am actually not here for a lot of the merfolk. A lot of the merfolk, I feel like... The facial structure, a lot of the times, just there's something a little off about it. That's not to say it's not gorgeous, but that's mm. just to say there's something a little off, usually right around the cheekbones, where I'm like, no, <coughs> no, I'm not here for that. But some of the merfolk lands are some of the top. Submerged oh, Boneyard yeah. is one of the most freaking oh, gorgeous we're, lands we're ever. We're talking about that next. You're jumping ahead of the game. I totally forgot who did that. Give, oh, me, a, give me a break. Funny. Okay, but this art's really pretty. Curse of Oblivion is amazing. You have this this hair that's blending into the sea foam, and it's just in this dark, it's just in this dark background where she's lying on the sand and just seems to be either asleep or dead. One of those matters more than the other. Uh, however, if she doesn't wake up, she's probably probably gonna drown because she's in the sand right next to the water however it's gorgeous straight up she's got like a tattoo or something on her arm or whatever it might be hair oh, okay. like it might be part hair. of her hair oh i got you okay it looks like hair and i love her dress she's got like this old-fashioned corsetti kind of dress I yeah love she that. does it's just it's just phenomenal and yeah. you will you will notice a pattern i i all of all of my loved cards oh, oh. traipse through the kind of like black mana oh yeah no i feel like i'm patterns with you guys know my style I like females on cards because they're really pretty okay so <laughs> christy already spoiled this one but our next artist is christine Choi. um so i said submerged boneyard i feel like this would be a really pretty card in foil because like dear lord this is so is. beautiful and blue and ooh. It is. You should show me that if you have it in foil. Oh I'm god, of, of course I have it in foil. Also, there's a different. There's another art for this card too that someone else does, that, which is also pretty, and I like that the, one. But I really like this one. Yeah, this is so beautiful. It. This was one of the surprises <laughs> for me out of Amonkhet because Amon yeah. Amonkhet was very. It was what you expected from an Egyptian set. It kind of reminds me of like like like. Um, Kaladesh and stuff too. Like I wasn't a huge fan of like artistic. Like I don't know. I'm not. I was not a huge the vehicle thing. Uh, oh, not a fan. Oh, we might we might have to have a fight over that because okay. I am okay. super here for Kaladesh. Let's not let's not film that. The um, intricacies on Kaladesh are just. I, I just I wasn't a fan of the vehicle stuff. I don't know. I I just that was unpopular opinion. Anyways, and then you said from Christine Choi uh, Botanical Sanctum. Because it's gorgeous. Oh, speaking but this, of Kaladesh, this is from yeah. Kaladesh. Yeah. So Kaladesh is super intricate. And I, I was talking to Zach Stella, who did a lot of the art from Kaladesh. Some, some of the art. I'm exaggerating. Some of the art from Kaladesh. And he was like, those filigrees were a nightmare to art. <laughs> yeah. But... It's, it's some of the most quality, pristine detailing in the magic world, I would argue. And Aether Revolt only made it better. It may, The vehicles mm. may not have been necessary. But that being said, it's all super, super steampunky and super in, just integrated and it's super detailed. And I love every step of Kaladesh. And this land is just pr a prime example of the intricacies of Kaladesh, because if you actually look at it, like the, the top of the actual botanical sanctum, this little gazebo made out of what I can only assume is moss, um, it's just, it's braided back and forth, it vanishes up into the world, and even if you look in the background, you see this, you see this intricate spaceship, 
That's it's it's probably not a spaceship. <laughs> I don't think they have spaceships on Kalidos. <laughs> they have ether ships. That's practically the same thing. Sure. Um, but you see this ether ship, super detailed in the background, and you can actually look at it and see what look like windows at each part. And you, it even though it's covered by mist. And this this is just prime example of why I will go to bat, while, why I will die for the Kaladesh. Although, Innistrad will always be my first love. Same. I'm, I'm here. I have a silver sword. I have a silver sword. <sighs> oh, so, oh, oh, I don't, we're not going there. You just, you sighed dramatically. We're not. We're oh, not. no, no. My favorite planeswalker, my spirit planeswalker, is from Avacyn Restored. Yes. I will die for Tamiyo. All of my yes. house is in Tamiyo. I have very emotional feelings. Okay, next artist is um, Lindsay Look. She does like the diamond cards. And I pointed out Sky Diamond because I think this art is quality. Fabulous. Like it is so pretty. The actual diamond itself is like sparkly and stuff. And I'm just like, well, that's not sparkly, but like super faceted. There we go. That, yeah. Oh, I really love this art. She does like, I think most of the diamonds, if not all of them. And then Christy uses Moss Diamond because I'm sorry, there is... I know that's not a tattoo, but it looks like a tattoo. It, it does it's, look like it's, a tattoo. Okay, yeah. It's there cool. is jewelry that is just beast. I would wear this. This actually looks pretty close to some bracelets that I own, if I'm being real. But it's so pretty. And then you have this moss diamond. And the thing that kills me about this is it was never printed in foil. Yeah. This this would be stunning in foil. I it's, agree. That moss diamond would really shine in <laughs> in it. Right? Uh, well, this was commander. Yeah, I don't think I don't yep. think these versions are. So Wits of the Coves, get on it. I need them in foil. I think they'd be so pretty. Yeah, right? we we have such convincing to do. Yeah, we you know we're definitely talking to Wizards of the Coast here. Oh well, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Lord, all your tabs yeah, I have I have a lot of tabs. I'm so sorry. If we were on my desktop, it'd be better. But like that's filming there is kind of a hot mess. Express. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about Martina Pilsarova. See, she knows what she's. That's why she's here. Okay. I said Gilded Lotus. There's a couple of versions okay. of Gilded Lotus. Okay. I love this. We do have to acknowledge <laughs> the elephant in the room, though. I can't pronounce things. Also, yes. <laughs> However, <laughs> your assessment that. Your favorite Martina card was, in fact, a card drawn by another artist. <laughs> okay, 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 so, like, you actually had to mention that, because, like, they wouldn't know, and now you mentioned it, so it's, like, things are ruining my reputation. What reputation? Wow, I'll just cry over here. <laughs> that evil laugh was a little too much. Okay, Gilded Lotus. I really love this art. And the colors in this card are so pretty. I'm all about this. I, the background, too, has got, like, this watercolor, like, blues and pinks and purples. I'm, like, I'm all about this art. I love this art. So I'm really torn on this art because... I, and I don't think I would care if the second Gilded Lotus hadn't also been gorgeous. When you give me something that is actually gilded that makes me so happy because this is just beautiful i like but, i think what you're saying is it's not a gilded it's not it's all i get what you're saying and, yeah. and, and, and it's not that i dislike this card it's that i feel like the the other gilded lotus is a better example of what a gilded lotus so like what you're saying like. is this needs to just have a different name and you would yeah. be happy with it yes yeah, yeah i don't care i love this art i think it's pretty and probably stunning yeah the art it. the art is stunning so and my pretty. issue has literally everything to do with the name that being said, Mind Stone, Mind Stone the, the promo, promo the because DCI they're, promo, they're different. Mind Stone, is stunning because look at all that tentacular nonsense coming up into the brain. It is a brain on a pedestal <laughs> with candles everywhere. And like, like quill and like ink. Like, yeah, I love that. I'm it's it's that. super smart brain. Yeah. It's like a brain just taken out. It's... It's like the brain from Ugly Americans. If you haven't watched it, watch it. And if you're under the age of 18, maybe don't. Uh, but it, there, there is a, a creature that is a brain creature in literally how it conveys thoughts and emotions is to occasionally suction onto people's head. And that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> I love your like description of what the card makes you think of. It's also very pretty. It's gorgeous in foil. Okay, um, next we have oh. Cynthia Shepard. I love Cynthia <gasps> Shepard. She's, she's fab. Okay, I picked Tavern Swindler because there's not enough purple magic cards. Thank you for snapping. Um, this card is 
fire. This art, I want to run this card in something, but like, I, I don't, I, I, I just can't, what would I run this in? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like some janky, janky EDH deck. That's, that's the only time. So. Yeah, that's fair. Like, and, and put it with some like, stable cards. No, you know. Oh, okay. No, you <laughs> can leave. The door is like right there. I'm, I'm really offended that I put you in this video now if you're going to talk nonsense. This How card is so pretty. Like, oh, just the yeah. purple hard trash. She looks like I would absolutely love to be swindled by this lady. Yeah. Ditto. And the unstable comment had literally nothing to do with how the card looks. It has everything to do with kind of the absurd actual <laughs> Oh, text. okay. Okay, but I would never run that trash, though. So. Oh, God, I would yeah, run no. this, though. I, I don't know what I'd put in it, but I'd run it. But, yeah, super solid art. Plus, her dress yeah. is on point. That being Preach. said, Cynthia Shepard has some of the best uh, actual... Uh, dressed art. So, for example, if it's a person oh, in an outfit, okay, yeah. her her outfits are super on point. I want all of the art outfits that she has made ever, and I want to wear them to work. I'm not sure how I would wear a halter top to work, but I would want to do it. And this feeds into my favorite, which is Scholar of Athreos. By the way, this in foil is fire. This card in foil, yeah. it's just this this great quality of light and darkness. And you have this mm -hmm. candle over in the edge and you have the uh, the varying outfit, which is half white, half black. And when Blue. you put it in foil, that foil is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It is to actual die for. I believe you have never seen, I don't think I've ever seen this card before. Yeah, I have. It's pretty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I recognize my problems. Also, I have to do a quick call out to my other favorite, which is Rabinia Soul Singer. Oh, yes. The yes. blues, the yes. greens, the outfit. I just got assigned one. I'm really pumped. So do I. Yeah. From, I, oh, from Chris. Yeah, I forgot yeah. that's a card I tried to get for you. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. He he actually got this one signed for me in, Vic, in uh, Richmond. Oh, okay. Like This was this was long okay. before yeah. you. But um, <laughs> this was like two... Uh, actually, this was like four years ago. But he, he, he bought me the uh, signed print. It actually has my name on it. It's very nice. Uh, and then he got the foil one of it signed. And it's the foil oversized. Oh, it's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. The dress, once again, the outfit is on yes. point. Also, I, I want to be known for... <coughs> like singing people into signing their names on my scroll like that's an awesome talent like, her like own people's souls and have them just i'm here for it you're I, like you're like ruby soul singer is my ultimate end goal i mean i mean what realistically I is it seems like that would be something i would do so what you're saying life. is if you like could put yourself into a magic card like that's what it would be Oh, that's that's a much larger discussion. Oh, okay. And realistically, if I put myself into a magic card, I'm Tamio. See, I want to so, put myself in Elspeth, but then I die, and then that sucks. So. But she's supposed to be coming back. Yeah, okay. Oh, let's there just break the rules of life, but okay. Okay, well, there's magic in this world. There's magic in the magic world. Thus, bringing people back. <laughs> Next artist, we have is Anna St Steinbauer. Thank you. There you okay, go. I've loved this art for a long time. Blood Bond Vampire. Look at her. She's just like, I got blood on my hand. I don't even care. Whatever. I'm wearing this awesome outfit. I've got like 15 knives on me. This is who I start to be in life. Maybe clean up the blood before you go to class. <laughs> you know what? Whatever. That being said, so I was around for battle for Zendikar, and I do not remember this card. I am super glad you called this one out because so this is a gorgeous card. Yes. I I am super positive that in foil, this would... Okay, I'm... I'm, I'm... <laughs> yeah. Anyways, this card's really pretty. It, it is, and I, like I did it. not know this card before, and I'm super glad you brought it to my attention because that's that's... Battle has some pretty, pretty good art. Okay, yours is <sighs> Blessed Spirits. I will it's fight so for this card. I it's love it. The way that you feel about... Was it mermaids? Yeah. Is the way that I feel about spirits. Okay. Spirits are almost always going to be my top contender for almost any card. Because they're so pretty. And when they're geists, they're even better. 
because there's this haunting nightmare creature and they're just stunning. And plus with this one, you just have the light that's shining down, yeah. you have the spirits, you have the stained glass behind it. And these children actually look real. They're not like some yeah. terror garden gnome children. They actually look real. And for all of those reasons, this card is just, and also it's to die for in foil. I feel like everything is better in foil though. That is accurate. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that assumption. We should, we should give them bloopers at the end of this. That's probably what's gonna happen, yeah. Okay, I can't say this, so can you please say this? Magali, Magali Villeneuve. Hey, there we go. That sounds like not correct, but you sounded so confident when you said it. Uh, that is correct, okay. actually. She, this is why she's here. Okay, there were That's many the cards. There were many cards that I could pick, but I love Linvala, the Preserver. I think I have this card as the background on one of my computers. Is this the background on my current computer? Oh, no, no, it's Kingdom Hearts, but usually it's a magic card. I always have magic cards as my backgrounds for things, typically. Uh, this art is so pretty. We need more pink in cards. Pink's like one of my favorite colors, and I just love the pink. She's got pink wings. Goals. Literal goals. This card is so better in foil. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes. Let's just presume that goes without saying, even though I will sure. absolutely say it absolutely. for the rest of this video. Yeah. However, this card mm -hmm. should feel busy. There's so much going on with it. You have the wings, you have the shield, you have the flowing robes in the background, and you have the light that's coming up through what I can only presume her legs. Um, and then you have a, a spear or an extension right there. This card should be busy. There's so much going on. Yeah. It's not. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's just fantastic. And the gold. So we have... We don't have a lot of pink cards, but you generally don't have like a pink into rose gold into gold. Yeah. And then into white spectrum. And all of that together just makes this a really fantastic card to look at. And just like, I'm here for it. This card's gorgeous. I, I, I think I need this card in foil. I think I've decided that I'm going to start collecting pretty magic cards. And I think that's ridiculous, but I think I'm going to do it. She does that. It's not ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's just like, I'm like, I want my value in my decks. But like, stuff like this, I'm like, I'm not going to run this card, even in Angels. So I'm like, I kind of just want it because I want it. So you either force it in Angels, or you accept that you have to collect pretty cards that don't go in decks. Guys, what do I do? Please tell me. Comment below. Okay, and your card is Sarah from the Scales. I'm so happy that you talked about this card. This card's my card. Beautiful. So my heart, I have a section of all of my binders that is the about me cards. And Tamio should go in there, but she doesn't because she goes in like the protected expensive binder. Because at this point, Tamio the Moon Sage is just obscenely expensive. Um, yeah, she's just like Yeah, she, uh, so the foils are running about 65, 70. Dear Lord. So, She's obscenely expensive, and I have a lot of her now. I have her in French and English and German. Uh, no, I'm trying to convince Chris to get me a German one for some holiday. Um, <laughs> but all that aside, uh, there is a section that is the about me section of my binder, and it's all of the terrible legal jokes. It's just all of the garbage legal jokes. So a foil... Oh, <laughs> she's a lawyer, by the way, for, for yeah. the disclaimer. So the... The foil rules lawyer is chilling in there. Foil ascended law mage. Oh my god, oh my god. They're, they're all these cards that reference law or legal <laughs> aspects, and those are stashed in there. And Seraph of the Scales is in it because you actually have the balanced scales in there. And just she's an angel, and it's a very dark angel, which you don't get a lot. You're, you If you get a dark angel, it's usually... Um, something like Avacyn, where she, which is gorgeous art. Kill it art. The Howard Lyon one. Was but, the, the yeah, beautiful. Yeah. But um, it's usually, she's fallen, and now she's just covered in blood, and oh, by the way, she's dead. Um, so with, it's more red. So, so it's, like it's, it's more red driven. Yeah. You don't have a lot of dark angels. And the fact that this is a, what I consider a dark legal angel, just like you even have the, the the moon in the background in the fog and it looks like the city is on fire and she's just oh, yeah. standing above it judging it all with her scales i am so here for this this is a gorgeous card it's even yes. better in foil okay i love a lot of things about this card first off ravnica one reason why ravnica is so great is because of all the city like the city of ravnica i'm like goals i want to go to ravnica like beautiful yep. stunning 
Um, I, okay, this is like a weird thing. I love angel like feathers, like feathers scattered. I love that. I just yep. think it's so pretty. That's what makes this card so beautiful. Also, I'm looking at this now and I should put this in my new Chaser deck. Yes. Because she works well with the afterlife, so. so yeah. The art, stunning though. Stunning. Yeah, the art is, the art is killer. Um, absolutely beautiful. And I do have to note the runner up here, which is Servant of the Conduit which was uh, part of the Kaladesh world. I can't remember whether it was Ether, Ether Revolt or Kaladesh. It was Kaladesh. Um, oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you know how I went on that whole rampage about Botanical Sanctum being a key, a key example of why Kaladesh was such a gorgeous world with all of the filigree and the intricacy? This is just living proof of that argument mm -hmm. because you just have these circles that are are represented throughout and you have this filigree even though it's tree limbs and you have her dress that's just flowing and every single part of that card is gorgeous i agree i will fight I like for that the card japanese cherry blossoms and stuff that were in there okay yeah the next artist is shelly wan um i picked skill borrower which is a card that i like a did not know existed but Lord, this woman is goals. Like, I love her purple whatever that's coming out of her hand. I don't know. Her outfit, she's got like this Grecian goddess that's going on with like this headband thing. And then there's like this moon in the back. Just everything about this card is, is beautiful. Yeah. And Shards of Lara was a <clears throat> was an interesting oh, set for art. Long Shards of Lara. It, it's an interesting set for art and flavor. Yeah. And you just look at it and you're like... You should not work, but you we really do. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so I am super on board for this one. And my favorite card by this artist is Survival of the Fittest. Judge Promo. Judge Promo. That is a very important part. I do not own this card, but I desperately want it. It is a $700 card. It is disgustingly expensive, like laughably expensive, to the point that I walked up to vendors at GP Memphis, looked down, and there was only one vendor that had it. Looked down at it and went, <laughs> in that exact... Like, somebody walked over to me to <laughs> offer me assistance when you I saw it, like, this. like, Harlan Quinn mixed with the Joker right there. <laughs> like, I just want to let you know. It's, her hair is gorgeous. Yes, I agree. The snake in the background while she's hugging the wolf is insane. This is like a Jungle Book card. It, <laughs> it, it, Ka is just chilling there. This wolf, we have not. We have no knowledge about him, except he looks so, I don't know, happy and angry. He's eating a snake. Oh, I'm okay. Uh, except it looks I, like he's eating the snake. It's either the snake is coming under his chin, the snake is in his mouth. I don't know that. Wolf is gorgeous. Her hair is amazing. She has a frog on a her frog. head. A frog. Yeah, I was going to guess a frog. Same. I, uh, going back and Girl forth between chameleon. I feel you. But she has frogs in her hair. There's swirls everywhere. This card is gorgeous. Like and it. I will only ever see it in magic vendor's cases. One day. One day. Oh god no. No no you may get it. Oh sweet summer child. I am not spending seven hundred dollars on a card. I said one day. This is like magical Christmas land. If like if the magic fairies like dropped a card on your doorstep, it would be like okay. survival the fittest. So uh, actually. There's a different card there. Anyways, we'll Library say that for Alexandria. We'll say that ooh, okay, that's fair. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. Okay, next artist is Erica Yang. So I picked Flusterstorm. This card is so pretty. This card is, I'm in foil, I can only imagine. That's gonna be the theme of the video, is everything's better in foil. It's just the, the, the colors, I'm not really a big Caveat. yellow, yellow person, except for like Tausinger because bananas. But like this, the That's yellow cool. in this, I just love that. And the different shades of blues, like the different hues, make this card a total standout. And I like fairies, fairies are cool. Okay, fairies are beast. Lorwyn yeah. was amazing. Fairies everywhere. Uh, the lands from Lorwyn were killer. <laughs> Like all, every everything. single one. Of Literally them. everything about Lorwyn was amazing. So we're not going to get into that because then we'll be here forever. That's your pick, another video. Your pick is Grove of the Dream Pods. Pods. I'm really glad you mentioned this because I don't ever pay attention to um, Plane Chase. Plane Chase because it's no, a no terrible does. format. Anyways. It really is. Uh, but nobody <laughs> plays, pays attention to Plane's Chase, but it has amazing art almost across um, yes. because you have the larger format. And with Grove of yeah. the Dream Pods, it's just this really ethereal landscape. 
with pods everywhere and there's no purpose to it it's just a lot of misty rainforest-esque yes. nonsense and it's beautiful like they're one of our one of the women artists that we've talked about tonight had actually had the actually did the drawing for misty rainforest and I fought yes. myself so much to, on selecting that one because everybody knows Misty Rainforest. Yeah. And our job here is to call attention to the cards that people don't know as much. And sure. nobody knows Plain Chase stuff. Facts. I, I mean, I wouldn't even say I know Plain Chase stuff, but I know how to use magic card search engines. True. And those pull up plain chase stuff, which means that I can stare at it and go, ooh, ah, accordingly. That's pretty. On a side note, Ta Taiga J True, True, True Good Jungle is really pretty by, I don't even know who, because I can't read that. Far. An individual. Anyways, um, the next, this is one of your favorite artists. If Actually, I no. Oh, I thought, I thought she was. Okay. No, I just really loved the name of one of her pieces of art. Anastasia. Of Chinikova. There we go. Uh, Dusk Feaster. Gorgeous. I mean, this woman is everything I strive to be in life. She's got a blue background, which, by the way, the pops of blue on point. Yep. Second off, she's got this amazing dress, which reminds me of Olivia Boldarin. This is not Olivia Boldarin, <gasps> but kind of reminds me a little Olivia bit of Olivia. Speaks to my heart. I agree. And then she's got this black, casty, shadowy magic thing following her. I don't care what it is. It's cool. And she's got, like, red hair. She actually straight up looks like Victoria from Twilight. I'm so sorry if you get that or don't get that. I'm so sorry. You're... I feel the hatred in here. I can't, I can't. I can't with you. Please come back. What nonsense is this? I can't <laughs> with you. <laughs> okay, but like this card is so pretty. Oh. And she's just kind of reminds me of you. She's got like red hair and stuff. Oh my god, my hair's red. Cool. You're um, kind of right. I don't know. I, I, don't know. It's, I dyed I it a know. lot, <laughs> so nobody knows what my hair color is. <laughs> that being said, so this is the good side of Eldritch Moon. I got really angry mm. about Eldritch Moon because... Okay. Uh, so, I love me in Estrad. In Estrad is solidly one of... Actually, solidly my favorite plane in Magic. However, they had just done the Eldrazi. Uh, and then they were like, hey, you know what we're going to do instead of doing in Estrad and doing more Gothic horror? We're going to bring the Eldrazi in to invade Innistrad and make it an entirely different world. And yes, you can make arguments regarding Lovecraft, but Lovecraft is first and foremost more sci-fi than Gothic. And Innistrad is all about Gothic <coughs> horror. And Lovecraft is Gothic, is sci-fi horror, more so than anything else. And when they brought in the Eldrazi, it just made me so angry. I have a rampage all stashed away that I will not get into here, but just just think it's more of the same of that argument. However, this is the good of Eldritch Moon. Yeah. This is a good example of solid artwork that had nothing to do with the Eldrazi. Pretty that's sure. just shadows and, and that chiaroscura that you really see in gothic horror that's just a really unique um, mm. Aesthetically, this just appeals to me on a different level, just because that that shadow, that you're, shadow you're, and like juxtaposition. Yeah, you're a witch. I recognize yeah. this fact. And this card is very. I yeah. come to terms with the fact that I am a witch. Your card, <laughs> which of the waxing, <laughs> which carries, further stamps that point home, which carries on the theme of this entire day. So I actually love this card. So Cult of the Waxing Moon is literally just. Four prominent individuals with three ghostly ones chilling in, chilling behind them in a dark forest with the moon shining down and what and a white wolf just chilling in front of them. It's gothic, it's gorgeous, it is just wonderful. It's what happens if you sneak out in the middle of the night and go to the forest for whatever reason. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would not recommend. Oh my god. That being said, so not only do I love the OG art because it's just fabulous and once again that shadow that's so important to the overall feel of the Innistrad world that really feeds into that gothic horror angle. But I also, when I went to Vegas, I wanted to get Anastasia Ovchinnikova to alter this 
to have Stevie Nicks in it. <laughs> it was a little outside of my price range. How much? It was obscenely expensive for just like, oh. while recognizing that artists take time and pour their talent and their love into what they're doing. So obviously don't want to undermine that. Of course. But also outside of my budget and recognizing that it was a lot of money for me. Probably not somebody else. Fair. That being said, I wanted the the Steamy Nicks uh, portrait with her just standing there holding the tambourine by her face. And I just desperately wanted it to get it altered to that. Instead, I got Shadowborn Apostle uh, altered to Stevie Nicks. So it's now Shadowborn Stevie. We're going to have to do a tour of your binder one of these days. We'll film My binder is day. super gross at this point, and it's all by accident. Okay, and do we want to mention this last bit? So I think it's super important to recognize where magic has come from regarding women artists and where we are now. Um, we're going to end on what's probably a slightly disappointing note regarding women and magic, but... That'll leapfrog into whatever next video we do regarding slightly toxic communities. Um, that being said, we have to talk about Melissa Benson. She is the elephant in the room. She's no longer, she's no longer active, to my knowledge, in magic. However, she is one of, if not the only, females who did art for literally the OG sets. Melissa Benson did art for Alpha, for Beta, for Unlimited. She is a queen. And while her art style is not necessarily something I appreciate, it's still super important that we recognize her, which means that we have to talk about, we have to talk about our favorite cards of hers. So yeah, I, I feel like, one thing too, I just want to say like, I'm also just not a fan of typically older stuff. Agreed. Like that is just kind of it's like my- It's very cartoony. It's just, it's not like my, and I feel like a jerk saying things I don't like, but like, I, know, right? I just like, I, it's just not my jam, you know what I mean? It's also, but it's also too, it's like kind of the similar thing of saying like, oh, this is my favorite version of this art. It's not to say that the other art isn't bad, it's just not my yeah. favorite. Like I have one that's my favorite. It's um, like Gilded Lotus. I recognize that yes. the original Gilded Lotus is gorgeous, but I also recognize that the other one, I love that too. Correct. Correct. And I find that too, like picking out which foils I want because I just want them all. So anyways, um, I, said, I said Lord of Atlantis because I have this card in Merfolk and I actually do quite like the colors in this card a lot. I think it's very, very pretty and I like the purple, I like the, I don't even know, red, orange? I don't really know, but so I do run this card. Also, it's a Merfolk. I do really like Merfolk and I like this card. Too. And so there was a guy who I went, was at one of my old shops. Uh, and this was his favorite card. And he was actually the one who taught me about Melissa Benson, which is really kind of funny that I have a man mansplaining women and, you know, magic art to me. But he talked about how important she was, and so I went back and I looked. And women are not, are disproportionately underrepresented underrepresented in okay. magic art. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a terrible thing, and we'll, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, but I have to talk about Touch of Death because I, like you, am not a huge fan of the older arts, um, mostly just because I feel like there's a realism that gets lost in it, but Touch of Death is cartoon death. <laughs> And, and, and with that one description, I'm here for it. And then once we move on, it's death with a scythe. And you just see the, the, the arm bones right there. And he's wearing this super extra cloak <laughs> that has really prominent purples and reds. And it's just sweeping around like he's turned a corner a little too quickly. And he's basically Hugh Jackman in anything. <laughs> it's fabulous. It is a ridiculous card, and I love the art. It just really speaks to my soul. Um, but realistically, Melissa Benson, you know, we, we are closing out with her because she was, she's the grand dame. You know, we have really prominent ma female magic artists, Teresa Nielsen and Rebecca Guay, but really they're, they're the odd man out, odd mm -hmm. woman out. Uh, regarding magic artists who are also women because most magic women most women magic artists don't actually have a significant 
uh, encyclopedia of work within magic to itself. So recognizing that the figures I'm about to say are very approximate because unfortunately there's not really a there's not really a high volume encyclopedia without me actually just like counting but a, there are approximately 540 artists who have done magic cards and that's that's a substantial figure over the course of 26 years only about 78 of those are women and this is a rough approximation but it does not creep over a hundred and that represents i think a larger problem in magic which is for a very long time, women were not represented at all in the magic community. And the ones who were there were not represented by WOTC, very specifically. Uh, there were not, at the time, a, a lot of higher art or really any division directors who were also women at the time. Uh, there weren't a lot of female magic artists at the time, and it was a toxic community to women. And we're slowly moving out of the cycle of toxicity. Uh, we had our first trans individual in the top eight recently, which Aww. is phenomenal. That is yes. so great. We're seeing representation there. Uh, we're seeing more and more women coming out to tournaments and showing up and doing great and curb stomping everybody. So we're just seeing a lot of fabulous movement, but realistically, the environment is still toxic. There's a lot that still needs to be changed about magic. And realistically, I would love to see more women in top slots at WOTC, really specifically. And a lot of that starts with the magic department recognizing that women want to see women doing art and recognizing the importance of valuing that and reaching out to female artists and recognizing that needs to happen because right now we're in a we're in a, what feels like kind of a a stalemate of progress hmm. which is we're seeing progress but we're not seeing progress necessarily where it needs to be hmm. as we're we're seeing progress at the tournament level but magic artists are still being poorly treated uh we have a ton of magic artists boycotting events because watsi just won't invest in say paying for anything for their artists let's be real um and then we're also seeing just a problem with a failure to invest in magic in, in female magic artists which is really a disappointing feature of and a very sad note to end on because we're improving but i don't think there's enough outreach to women particularly artists and necessarily also players even. I feel mm -hmm. like I feel like women are just finding ground here and carving it out for themselves and that Wizards hasn't done enough to welcome women in and to draw mm -hmm. women in and to bring them into a community that desperately needs change and growth. I agree. And I want to just stamp one last thing home and when we're going to end off because we could really talk about this all day. Oh, um, for sure. We took our kids to see Avengers Infinity War last May. This story relates. You're looking at me like I'm psychotic. Your kids. Don't don't lay children. My kids. My, my kids. Yes, my seventh graders. You learn uh, with our kids. kids and I was like, oh. Tracy, don't, <laughs> don't lay children at my no, feet. No, 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 no. Please, Lord, no. Um, they were at the time they were sixth graders and we took them to see Avengers Infinity War and every single time Black Panther came on the screen and every single time Black Widow did anything remotely fabulous. Can I talk about Okoye? No, we, we have to, this is the last point. This is the last <laughs> point. We have, to, we have to end here. Basically, my, I teach a lot of um, people of color, POC, and to see my kids get so pumped every single time that there was a awesome woman on the screen every single time. Like, we were like snapping, we had the whole theater versus so we were like snapping like, yes, my widow. And I was like, yes, like, you're gonna make me so proud. It's just the, the main takeaway that I learned and what I really want to say is representation matters. And having my kids being able to point and say, that's my first people, like people call this, that superhero looks like me, is like monumental, huge. We need more of that in our community. Boom, we're done.